Hey guys, Exeter Rider. Now, in this video, I want to explain my thoughts on the Super Meteor 650 by Royal Enfield and the Royal Enfield 350. I want to let you know some of the differences and some of the deciding factors why you might go for one or the other. So this is a new bike for 2023, the 650. Um, it's a parallel twin engine. It's a very smooth engine, typical parallel twin, you might say. It's a six-speed gearbox as well. And this is definitely more suited to longer riding, uh, you know, longer, more miles. And uh, yeah, essentially more of a, a long distance cruiser, so to speak, compared to the single cylinder uh, Meteor 350. Now, both engines are tried and tested and uh, they are both suitable for around town and you know a lot of usable torque there from both engines the 350 is definitely more lazy and uh, takes a bit of winding up but it's got that single cylinder low down torque which everybody seems to like including myself so sat on the bike on the 350 uh, as you can see i'm i've got a 30 inch inside leg measurement a very very comfortable seat i would say that this seat is slightly more comfortable than the 650 seat it's a personal thing, this video, all right? So try one for yourself and see what you think. Um, feet position here is very, very natural. It's just right for me. And the handlebars are a nice distance back as well. Very, very comfortable. Uh, probably one of the most comfortable bikes on the market at the moment, I would say. So, and obviously it's very light as well because it's only a single cylinder. So that's that one. Uh, now both bikes do come with uh, a rear rest as well if you buy that particular bike in that spec. Now on the 650, obviously it's more heavy, it's a 240 kilogram gram bike. Um, it feels the same actually when I'm idle like this and my feet are out on the ground. Uh, feet position definitely feels more forward than what it does on the 350 and uh, the foot you know the on both bikes to be fair the the brake is pretty uh in, in a nice position there it's not bad um but yeah you definitely feel a bit more weight but considering it's a 240 kilogram bike unless you're pushing this bike around it's actually um when it's when it's running you don't feel it at all it's actually really easy to deal with even at slow speeds walking pace um it's very easy to manage both bikes have exceptional uh, quality of finish. Obviously the badges are slightly different on the 650 compared to the 350. To look at these bikes, both of them look beautiful, beautiful looking bikes. Now this has got more detail in it, of course, being a, a bigger bike uh, with a bigger engine. And um, yeah, there's a bit more to see there. And you can see that this has been updated compared to the uh, Meteor 350. That being said, I don't look at either of these bikes and think that one looks better than the other, personally. I, I, both, I think they both look uh, really nice. Uh, both people stoppers as well. People always come over and talk to you about the Royal Enfield um, brand. For pillion carrying capacity, I would say that the uh, 350 has got a thicker seat, so it's going to be more comfortable for a pillion. Obviously this one here has the backrest as well, which is very welcomed to anyone who's riding on the 350. Um, but you can get a backrest on the 650 as well. The seat isn't so well padded on the 650 for sure. Now one thing which I've picked up on both bikes, which I don't like, and certainly on the 650 is the rear shock is harsh. You know, bearing in mind that you're gonna be doing higher speeds on the 650 if you're on the you know, dual carriageway or, or whatever, the, the shock does come straight up through you, you know, through the seat and onto the rider with that one I'm finding. Uh, not so much so on the 350. I think this is set up a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, I think that's definitely, that, that's the only thing that I think that Enfield need to work on are, are those rear shocks, especially when the front shocks are shower on the 650. I would expect the same quality in the rear shocks as in the front shocks, but unfortunately, front shocks are great in the 650, on the rear, very harsh. So financially, we've got 
a seven grand bike there, 7,100, somewhere around there. And this one is around 4,200. Some of the updated finishes I'd like to mention as well, which are better on the 650 as opposed to the 350, is first of all, the fuel tank filler is much nicer. The 350 has a, a very plasticky uh, cap on top there. Uh, whereas the 650 has got you know a nice feel, it, although it's still plastic, it looks a bit more uh, substantial. Um, the wheels on the on both bikes are quite nice. I would say that the 350 takes it because it's got a uh, powder coated finish on the outside, and then you can see where the machine is uh, chipped away at it with the milling machine and giving it that sort of aluminium fleck there. So on the rear LED light, they're both similar. They both have that single stop lamp there, which looks really, really nice. Uh, lovely feature that. And on the switch gear on the 650, it's much nicer because it's got the aluminium cladded uh, switch gear there. So it's, that's really quite nice. Uh, power wise, this is lazy, uh, but beautiful. Um, and puts you in a state of Zen, whereas the 650 is much more lively. Uh, it tends to egg you on a little bit more to uh, ride it a bit harder. Uh, this sounds nice. But to be fair, the 350 sounds really nice as well. They're just different, you know, obviously this is a, a parallel twin, uh, slightly more refined, I would say, feeling to this bike, whereas that one's got a bit more raucous and a bit more character to it, I would say. Fuel economy on the 350 is second to none. It's really, really good. You can fill it up and literally just forget about it. Whereas this is, you know, you can see the needle go down a bit quicker for sure. So overall, what you've got to ask yourself is firstly, what have you got in the, in the piggy bank? Uh, whether well, you've got the £7,200 here, or uh, I think these start around £3,800. Uh, what do you do riding-wise? Do you carry a lot of pillion riding uh, on long distances? It's definitely going to be this one. Uh, do you like a bike which you can open up and have a bit of fun on? It's definitely the 650. Um, do you carry pillion around town? Then this one would be fine, up to around sort of national speed limit uh, area. Then the 350 will do you absolutely fine, even with a pillion, because it's got a nice amount of torque. Obviously only 20 horsepower, but the way it delivers that 20 horsepower is really quite nice. And overall, obviously styling, you know, both bikes are styled nicely. I don't look at either of them and think that I prefer one or the other. but. If you want to know my own personal opinion, and it doesn't matter about me really, but I, I need to say this, um, I would probably go for the 350. And the only reason for that is because I don't do a lot of motorway riding or dual carriageways or need to munch up a lot of miles. Most of my riding is around town and on A roads and um, sometimes with a pillion as well. Obviously, this is a lot easier to move around as well compared to the 240 kilograms of the 650. Um, so yeah, for me, it, I, it would probably suit me more to have the 350 because it is enough. You know, it does enough of what I need it for. Uh, the 350 is definitely a more basic bike to look at. Uh, it is quite kind of bare bones compared to the 650. I think they've chucked a lot more at the 650. And um, if you want to talk about uh, the real finer points about the bikes as well with the engines, then I would say that the engine block is nicely CNC'd milled. Uh, it comes across to me compared to the 650, which has a cast uh, cylinder head there. Both bikes also come with chunky levers as well. Uh, they're not the same, they're, they're similar. I would say that the, the 650 has adjustable clutch and brake lever and they feel a little bit more chunky. So, uh, but both bikes have very chunky brakes. That's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to, uh, while I had the 650, I got this one on long-term loan. Uh, which I'm really, really enjoying.
Uh, it's one of the best bikes I've had for a long, well, one of the most enjoyable bikes I've had for a, a long time. So yeah, I just want to let, let you know my thoughts on the differences of it. Now, obviously my thoughts might be different than yours. I've tried to rely for everybody there. Um, I think whether you're, you know, short or tall, I think both bikes fit you as well. That's something which I forgot to mention. Um, you can't go wrong with either bike. You're going to be happy with it. They're, owning a Royal Enfield, having it in the garage, is it's just superb. It's uh, a wonderful thing. So, um, if you've got any questions, please type away down in the comments below. Uh, please like the video; it would be a massive help. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next Sunday at 4 p.m.